Well, hello. Welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm Chip. And I'm CJ. And it is Friday in the Riv, and we have one of our, you know, we're, we're going to be like the, the, the networks now. We have one of our Spindle City Straight Talk contributors today, uh, ready to ready to give us some more information on a subject that uh, he's already presented before the council. And uh, we want to bring him in, CJ. Well, before we do that, um, many people have heard the mayor, the dictator, I hate to use the term mayor, the dictator, um, make announcements that the trolley is that diamond being refurbished. Well, one of our viewers was at the at, at one of the city's garages and a city employee turned around and he says because he saw the bookmobile there and he said oh so where did where's the trolley it's that diamond right no trolley's not a diamond trolley's right inside i can't take you inside because i'll get retaliation from the dictator so the trolley's inside being refurbished by city employees not by diamond and the big question that came up was if we're going to buy a trolley, why does it need to be refurbished? We just bought a trolley. We couldn't refurbish the three trolleys we had? What a waste of money. So we paid $60,000 or something like that for this trolley, and we have to refurbish it. So there's more money on top. Why didn't we just refurbish the three that we had? Because Paul had to give some money to one of his friends. Come yeah, on, obviously CJ. Something. Come on. You Obviously know, you something. know why that happens. Yes, I know. You know because remember, we I've, all got know. Find, I've got to find a way to spend the money. And let's not forget the fact that Paul contributed to the closure of the Timio Center. The Timio Center was a homeless shelter and a social service type program where they allowed them to wash their clothes, take showers, use the bathroom and meet with social service personnel to get housing, medical assistance, and whatnot. And now uh, they closed the homeless shelter, the overflow shelter, earlier in March. And on March 22nd, the money ran out. And so they had to close the Timio Center social service portion. And why was that? Because the mayor didn't want to give them any more opera money. And when they were told to go to Mike Dion, they went to Mike Dion, who's community development um, block grant funds. Mike Dion said, well, we're gonna send you, we're gonna refer you over to Bay Coast Bank to make you independent. Wow. To make so, you independent. But that, he actually said that? Yes. So what are we, the what is Fall River, the marketing division for Bay Coast Bank? I guess so. I mean, the, the, the fact that- But remember, is, there's no conflict of interest- That's by right. By appointing anybody from Bay Coast Bank. Nothing personal about the individual. Let me make that perfectly clear. I met him, he seems like a okay guy. But now we've got, now we've got Dion, uh, why didn't they refer him to Rockland Trust or Citizens Bank or St. Anne's Credit Union? or some, some other place. No, it's always there. So you're gonna tell me these people are gonna be unbiased when you appoint them to the boards? I'm sorry. Even that perception, even if they had enough ethics, which I don't know, we will see, to do what Joe Marshall did and resign when a mayor tries to tell you the way to vote. Uh, but it, it can't happen. And then a few year, a year or two ago, at the retirement board, Bridget, when the when we were we got hacked, the first thing out of her mouth was, "Oh, call Patrick Long over at Bay Coast. We've got our hack anti-hack insurance from Bay Coast." Well, you know, the city does an awful lot of business with them, and that's fine. But it's only with them. So when you get people. Uh, from there, you're not going to say that there's no conflict because they are very, very close personally and professionally. And whether the, a lot of the things they're doing have met 
the standards of bidding, etc. Well, that's for somebody else to decide. But I mean, they've made it abundantly clear. And the thing about it is their arrogance to just say it. Right. Say it in public. Don't whisper it in somebody's ear. You know, I agree. I mean, listen, we all refer people to people we know if they're good at what they do. And I'm not saying they're not good at what they do. But don't tell me that I don't have a... If I had a jump ball, I wouldn't lean towards somebody that I know. You know, if I got a good mechanic and you ask me for a mechanic, I'll I'll send you to him. I'll tell right. you why. Why don't you look at this guy? If I've got somebody that's a good plumber, yeah, we I'll say, well, this guy I use this guy. This guy's pretty good. But I mean, damn, you're blatant here. This is a city. We're supposed to have competitive bids on things. We're supposed to have to get the best deal. But this is what they do. You know, this this guy is just shameless now. His third term, he shuts down something. Remember the Paul Coogan, uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde Coogan? You remember the Paul Coogan that was over there? Said, I'm going to make give him showers. I'm giving him money out of my wallet. Oh, I'm wonderful, Paul Coogan. Don't you want to go to heaven? Well, what happened to that guy? Now, well, it's interesting. Sudden, it's interesting you should bring that up because... It was brought up that the city has now. This, we have portable laundry, showers, and bathroom. And when they were asked, "Where are they?" Oh, they're in storage. I guess there's something else in the garage. A lot of good it does there, right? Obviously, a lot of good it does there. Well, they even had a building up there, and they didn't know it. Remember? That's right. I remember that. And don't forget. There is a state law which requires cities and towns to share the wealth. They're supposed to share their financial services with the area banks in their community. Is Paul doing that or is Bacos getting everything? Something else to look at. All right, let's bring on our contributor. He's been sitting in the sidelines waiting patiently for us to finish our session. And there he is, again, Nelson. Good morning, fellas. Good morning. Good morning, What Nelson. do you have for us today? And it never fails to amaze me with those stories. Oh, well, you know, the dictator's good at what he does. Well, you know, it felt really good speaking at that meeting the other day. They're reminding them that it's not everywhere that rates are going up in Massachusetts. Because it seems that with Watergate 2.0, I don't know who created that term, but they were spot on. Because here with, here with Watergate 2.0, we're actually dealing, dealing with water. <laughs> you know, it's, um, you know, and I, I, I went down with, you know, frequently question questions and ask, you know, uh, and basically in the town of Wellesley, they haven't seen a water rate increase. Uh, let's see here since July of 2011. And they haven't seen a sewer rate increase since July of 2020. Well, I wonder why. It's because. They tell you how you can lower your water bill, and that is to use less water. And and the reason why they're paying less for a town like that is because they're using less water. But here in Fall River, they want to make water usage here as a revenue stream because Paulie's broke. He's got no more money. His opera scratch ticket is run dry. So what do you do? You reach into the pockets and you want to go go this route. And what's funny is that they wasn't saying this two years ago, though. But all of a sudden, two years later, they want to they want to go this route. When two years ago, as you guys can remember, they were talking about investing about 
I think 13 to 16 million dollars into the water, water department to ease the pain with those rates. Given what I just read here, and it's pretty, pretty uh, extensive, I think the federal government needs to come in and investigate what's going on here because how is it that in one in one area in Massachusetts there they are you know haven't seen any increases over there but it's the same here I mean water is water it comes out of your drains and it comes out of your faucets and you know number five when it says uh, when is the next water rate increase it says there is currently no additional rate increase anticipated this year any potential increase next year will depend heavily on this year's water use so like i said the federal government needs to come in and investigate we truly we truly have watergate 2.0 and this is going to stick with them for a long time i mean what's next are we going to start taxing the residents on the air that the, on the air that they breathe when they walk outside and, and, and go to work is that next like i said when it comes to nickel and diamond the taxpayer when is enough going to be enough especially like i said previously on another show this city is handing out questionable assessments to certain market rate developments meanwhile you have everyone else paying through the roof with those taxes so and lastly i want to say uh it seems that the mbta was in town yesterday they was in the south end association meeting uh i didn't go to that one because the, the cameras are not there but I will be at the April, I think, I think it's in, coming up soon in April, uh, this month, I think at Morton School. You know, Channel 12 is gonna, yeah, you know, Channel 12 is gonna be there. So I wanna speak at a broader scenery venue because they owe us money and I'm looking forward to what the response is gonna be for them to pay the city back of what they owe because what they paid is not fair market value. So, like they but did. again, guys, yes, we're in the same, we're in the same boat as New Bedford. So when it comes to this water issue, this ought to infuri infuriate the residents. And like I said previously, you don't need to be a, uh, a homeowner to stand up for homeowners. You don't need to be a homeowner to stand up for your own rights too, because remember, if the water yep. rates go up and the taxes go up, so does your rent. So. Look, um, are we ha we're having some issues, aren't we, with the uh, with the feed? Yeah, it's uh, it's coming. It's a uh, feedback on your mic, so I keep muting you. Yeah, well, all right, I'll 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 mute my mic, but it's also there was also like even when my mic was muted, there were there was issues, but. Yeah, that uh, we had a. Right, we listen, have a let me problem. let me just say this, and I'm going to mute myself for a while. I'll let you guys talk, okay? This is absurd um, to tell you you have to pay more all the time regardless of usage. That's that's ridiculous. But let's look at a tale of two cities here, uh, towns and cities. Well, Wellesley, Wellesley gets their water from two ponds and from the Massachusetts Water Resources Authority, which is the Quabbin and Wachusett's Reservoir. They actually have to go to somebody outside their own community to get their water, and they pay virtually nothing for it now. They pay based on usage. Fall River's got its own water supply. We sell water to other people. But we have a bunch of politicians who only know how to take your money, only know how to make this a business. Water. Okay. There's some water, okay? I'm going to charge myself extra for this water. Even though I didn't drink it yet, or all of it, and I already paid for it, I've got to pay more. 
You have to pay more. That's what they're telling you. Every single one of those politicians should be recalled that vote for this thing. This is absurd. Now we're going we're gonna to hoard water and use it as a commodity. There was, a t there was an attempt a few years ago by some groups to do that in, throughout the entire world. They wanted to capture all the water resources in the world and say, you need water to survive, and we own it all. And now you're going to pay through the nose. Well, the North War Tupper and the South War Tupper, you know, the city didn't build those. Mother Nature did. They were here when the Indians were here. They're, it's our water. And we have to pay to filter it. And we have to pay to maintain the pipes. But we don't have to pay for their fiduciary irresponsibility, for their fiscal, for their lack of fiscal management of our money. Paul never stopped spending money on the things he likes. He's, keep, he's keeping in pay raises, all those new jobs coming. But the taxpayers in this city, they're going to figure out another way to make you pay, pay more for water, and tell you everybody does it. They lie. They lie. Not everybody does it. They tell you, don't worry about the crime, because everybody's got crime. Well, there's 10 safe cities, the 10 safest cities. Not everybody has crime like we do. We should be trying to get at the top of those categories, best, not worse. Now they're doing it with your water, and this is reprehensible. Because water is a necessity to life. Most of our bodies are comprised of water. Now they're going to charge you. Wait a minute, shut up. You were talking about taxing something else. Maybe they're going to charge us for the water in our body. And with that, I'll turn it back to you guys. Take it away. Well, that would be interesting. Huh? A tax because you're alive? <laughs> what, what a tax that will be, huh? <laughs> you're be taxed. You just drank the water. You've got to be taxed, Chip. <laughs> got to charge you more, more money for that. Sorry. Oh, there you go again. <laughs> You'll get the bill in the mail. <laughs> uh. Well, what's interesting is, and, um, you know, I was speaking to a city councilor about this, was that she buys bottled water. And she goes through, and she uses that for drinking only, and she goes through about three boxes pallets, whatever you want to call it, of water and in three months. And it doesn't cost her as much as it's going to cost her water bill because she's not going to use enough water. <laughs> so, And thank you, Lewis. You're right. The pay raises was to buy loyalty and do what he wants. And that's exactly what's happened. The dictator is doing everything he wants and he's doing it regularly. And this is what happens. This is what happens. There are no checks and balances in this administration, the dictator rules. And that's uh, you know, what about it. I guess I, I guess when he said, you know, for those to, to go jump in a town river, I, I guess what he meant to what he really meant to say was when you do, don't forget the shampoo and don't forget anything else. You know, I mean what else is next? Are 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 the are the residents do they have to go to the local supermarket? And buy those big gallon of water and rinse themselves off over their head, given how, how heavy those things are. I mean, what else, what else, what else is coming down the road that we don't know about? We are that broke. It's the same thing doing they're doing with the retirement board. You, gotta, you have to follow the money. When you follow the money, it leads you to, to the answers that you want to know. What else is next to nickel, nickel and dime the taxpayers? The purple bags? Are, are they coming? I mean, I, I still see pictures, you know, on, on the road over here. Uh, you know, with trash in there. They're, they're still around. I mean, the household, you know, the household fee. I mean, 
What else, what else is coming? What else is coming? Because look, you know, we have budget season coming up. And yes, yes, you're right, Lewis. Look, we have, listen, we have gone from him saying, and, and, and everyone in, in, in his orbit, we are fiscally sound. We're in a good spot. Everything's okay. We went, we went from that to I want the two and a half. I want to ask the residents how they want to pay for, for Diamond. And I am going to, or, or the city is going to now take, you know, make you pay more for water when you don't even use that much. Think about this. If every single resident didn't use not one drop of water, you didn't flush the toilet. I mean, you, you turn off your toilet, you know, to turn off the water pressure. Uh, you don't use the shower. You don't wash your dishes. Nothing. If you don't use not one drop of water, you're still going to pay more. We have we have truly turned a new corner here in this city. I I mean this makes it really it, it really makes you scratch your head as to what else they're hiding from us. And like I said, I think it's time for a forensic audit. We need to know where we stand financially as a city. We need to know. And like I said, with the whole prop two and a half, there's a process to that. At a minimum, when he wants to talk about Durfee, I mean, uh, Diamond, at a minimum, we have to go back and ask how the residents want to pay for Durfee because I showed the ballot. All the councilors have it. You, you need to ask two questions. You can't ask just one. Hopefully they say yes. You can't choose the override. You have to present both options in question two. If they say yes, they have to choose either the override or the underride. So at a minimum, we have to go back to Durfee. And if they want to ignore that, then he is potentially exposing the city to unnecessary legal uh, proceedings because you have to follow the process. He may want the override, but he might not even get that because the questions may not even pass for Diamond. I mean, look how look how they don't want to put it on the tax on your tax bills for, for Durfee. Even though I show the numbers, fifty-four dollars per one hundred thousand for residential and for commercial and, and, and industrial is one hundred and fifteen dollars per one hundred thousand. It's very simple. So, think about this. He wants to be he wants to be sneaky on the Durfee side. Can't calculate fifty-four dollars per one hundred thousand. What makes you think? He, he's going to do it with, with, with the diamond if it passes, which I highly doubt the question will pass as a whole. But if it does pass, I strongly urge them to vote for the underride. You want to know why the, the DOR has that in there? It's to, it's to, it's to protect the taxpayers. And, and for the Durfee situation, when they put those two options on, the ballot there again i strongly urge them to vote for the underride and if that happens that means there needs to be a, a total recalculation of all the numbers for the death service that they showed us a month before the election so it, it, it is it truly is a reckoning i, I have never seen someone totally financially mismanage the money. It really is true. He, he, like Mr. X said, that man blew that money just like how Scarface blew the cocaine underneath his nose in that mansion. That is the amount of wasteful spending. We could have done a lot more. Other cities have done a lot more with that opera money. But here, squandered and now he's hoping for the taxpayers to bail him out 
and, and, and it's come at a cost of your own water. Watergate 2.0. And if the residents decide to perform a recall, um, you know, that, that potential election is going to, special election is going to be dependent on the people that have been posting their tax bills online to show the obscene increases. It's going to be contingent upon them, whoever those 10 taxpayers are, you know, listen, if that happens, he, he can't blame no one but himself. But this one issue, Watergate 2.0, oh, it's, it's, it's going to stick with him for a long time. I agree with you. I agree with you. I've been agreeing with you for a long time. And, you know, the interesting thing is I proposed to some people to do an underwrite several times. Here was the answer that was generated just from the discussion of possibly doing it. If you approve an underwrite, we will lay off police and fire immediately. Which is the threat that they use all the time. And I'll tell you right now, if he can't meet his budgetary needs, because Bridget said it very clearly, that they can't meet their budgetary needs because of the contracts and the pay raises that they've given. Bridget Amon, the chief financial officer, said that. They can't meet the budget because they don't have the money. That threat's going to be police and fire. Meanwhile, when you look at what Maura Healy did, she's put a hiring freeze on. She, uh -huh. stopped it. she stopped it. And she made sure that the one thing that was protected was public safety. She said very clearly, I will not stop the hiring on, uh, for public safety. Public safety needs to be protected. We need public safety. And that's what has to happen. And until that happens, in the city, at least, we're going to have a problem. All right? And I'm wondering, because Bridget also made reference to the fact that they're asking other departments, unions, for cuts. I want to know which ones. Which ones did you ask for a cut? I want to know. And how much of a cut did you ask? People have a right to know what's going on. And we don't. We're blinded by this administration. The dictator doesn't want you to know because if you knew, you would be pissed off. Pissed off. And that's the way I feel. I'm pissed off. You know, the underwrite, you know, they can try to spin it all they want, but the underwrite protects the taxpayer. Yeah. You know, the, you know, you know, it, it's it really makes you wonder if you give like, let's say the residents think about it. It's a suicide mission to vote for the for the override portion. You're going to give him free reins to reach in, to reach into, into your pockets more. Because, look, the, it's, it's never enough money. Never enough money. And like I said. We need a full forensic audit. We need to know what the hell is going on across the board. Across the board. Like, we really need to know where we stand. Protect yourselves and make, you know, and vote for the underwrite. You know what? Say no to the question altogether. Say no. Because two overrides. Let's let, let's say this. Let's say the residents choose the override for Diamond. Think about this. Two schools, two overrides, two and a half. Property taxes going up. They're not going to be able to to absorb all that. So, like I said, with Durfee, it, it, it's already built. We can't go back on that. So you vote no. I mean, you vote um, you vote for the underwrite. And for the diamond, you vote no. You need to protect yourselves. And that position is not because of anti-education. It's about physical responsibility. He's going to have to dig into the pockets of the, of the budget as a whole 
and start tightening the belt because obviously big government is getting a, a lot more expensive it's well, time that we start tightening the belt listen listen uh this is all true but there's a greater problem here you're asking something that could never happen especially with this administration the worst ever just like Biden is the worst president ever, he's the worst mayor ever for spending. Uh, there's a greater issue here, and this is a symptom of it. It's the fact that they will never stop taking your money if you let them. The answer is to change the government, put different people in there. Because if private industry told you that we're going to raise our prices 5% every year regardless of whether we need to or not you they would be out of business they would be out of business look at what's happening to the fast food industries they're crippling them because they're getting too expensive because of inflation but they suffer consequences when they do this. But the city never does unless we hold them responsible. The governor said she will not touch public safety and he will threaten to cut public safety. But let me tell him something. Because I will initiate a lawsuit. There have been communities that sued fire departments and police departments for failing to provide them with adequate safety levels and they've won. I have those cases. If he keeps all his cronies over in his school department and in City Hall and triple the size of every department that he likes and he lays off fire and police, I will initiate a suit. Because the city has an obligation to provide a safe community as much as humanly possible. That should be the last place we cut, number one. And secondly, there should be nothing in a budget, in any part of a budget, that provides for automatic increases whether you need them or not. That's just giving them money for being incompetent and inefficient. And it'll never stop. And it never will. Durfee, Diamond, East Overshoe, a new building for the water department. Let's build a new building for the, let's build a giant, a giant health spa for all the connected city employees. Let's matter of fact let's put it on some caribbean island let's put let's buy them a plane to fly out there periodically and take vacations to de-stress themselves while you scratch your ass trying to pay your bills milton friedman said if you give the government the sahara desert they will run out of sand because they never stop spending. And the only way they stop spending is when you put your foot down as a citizen and say no, no to the two and a half override, no to these water rates. And if they pass them, you bounce them. 1995, five counselors got bounced. Five counselors. Because they didn't care what the people that wanted. In the next election, I think we're looking at about eight of them that need to be bounced. We can hope. And this is a problem. This is a problem that, you know, it's not, this is a symptom. It's a, it's a horrendous symptom that you're paying more for water when you're using less. And we can point to those in great research on a part of Nelson. But this is just a symptom of the problem. These son of a bitches never stop spending. They never stop. They don't care. 
$19,000 pay raise for a mechanic. Really? $10,000 step de increases because they decrease steps and contracts. I will read you on a Monday show exactly what the CFO said out of the minutes of the meeting where she said they can't meet the contractual obligation. Even though on this show and in emails to the council, I told them that according to chapter 150E section 7, all contracts have to be funded. And what did they do? They sat there just like they did with this and nodded their heads and said, ah, oh, the hell with it. These people are just going to keep paying. Oh, we got some investments down the road. That's not a revenue stream. And I'll tell you what, I got some tickets for the new Powerball. It's up to one, nearly uh, one and a quarter billion dollars. It'll be over that by the time they draw it, maybe one and a half billion. I'll tell you what, you better go light a lot of candles that I don't hit it. Because you're in deep shit. Back to you guys. <laughs> I say the same thing. If I hit it, I, I the first thing I'm doing is I'm setting up a trust that's going to pay the legal fees for every lawsuit against the city. They, they're they going to lose their entire budget just on lawsuits. Just on lawsuits. They won't be able to afford it. And it will teach them to stop. Because that's the only way you're going to teach them to stop. It's financially. And they haven't learned that yet either. Just look at the number of lawsuits they still have pending. And they don't want to talk about them in public. So, this is what happens. And by the way, the water out of the quabbin, that is natural, artisanal water. It comes from the aquifer. They mm. built the quabbin reservoir to collect the water from the aquifer. It's clean. They don't even have to process the water out of the quabbin. So that tells you our water should be just as clean because it's, as far as I know, it's not going through any contaminated areas. Oh, wait a minute. The, the dump was up there. That's right. The water passes right through there. This is what happens. This is what happens. You know why we're on water, CJ? You know, there used to be, I know there's a, I'm sure the law is still the law. Many, many years ago, you remember, and it's still there, you remember South Shore and Goose Wing Beach? Yep. Okay. Well, I remember one time I saw a great debate uh, on, on, on somebody because they were crossing Goose Wing Beach, which was a private beach. You had to go there separately to get to South Shore. And one of the lifeguards stopped the individuals and his family who were walking to the uh, South Shore and said, you can't cross here. You got, this is a private beach. And he said, no, this isn't. He said, you own the land there. If I walk below the water line, you don't own that. That's, That's right. part of the ocean. That's mm. right. You don't own this. I'm walking below the high water mark. And you know something? They let them through. This is our water. Mother Nature gave us this water. That's right. This is our water. And for them to abuse that gift we had, that we got, is is reprehensible and that's i had to put that in because like it, it brought back a memory of that guy saying you don't own this they don't own that that's a natural resource given to us and for them look nobody's complaining we got to pay for the piping and the and the treatment of the water and stuff like that but when they come out and tell you we don't give a damn that we're getting this water for free. We're going to not only just charge you enough to provide you that, your own water, get it to you, but we're going to gouge you. Because if a private entity did that, they would be sued. 
and it's it's just this whole situation. You know, Watergate 2.0 may be the demise of this entire this entire government in this city. You know what's interesting? What's interesting before you go anywhere, Nelson, is mm-hmm. that on the ballot for Westport, they want to expand the water provision from all the way up Route 6 to Dartmouth. Where does that water come from? Fall River. Because they expanded it over there to cover the hotels. They needed it for the hotels because you can't get enough water from the wells. And with that water comes sewerage. We have enough problems with our own. And when we're giving this stuff away, if we're selling the water to Westport and to Freetown and to Tiverton, we should be making a profit on that water. And we're not. That should be the offset. That should be offsetting our water costs. We're providing, especially when we're providing water to an out-of-state uh, entity. Kibbutz in Rhode Island. That's not Massachusetts. It's time that we take control of these government entities and these departments and show them who truly is boss. Which is why when I said... You know, what would happen if the residents decided to pay their water bill 30 or maybe 60 days late? We, we all know how fast a ship will sink, right? I don't know. Maybe, maybe they need to, you know, make the ship sink a little bit to make them come to the table and say, OK, we can no longer do this no more. We're going to do what we can to bring down those rates. Because remember, everything comes back to the taxpayer. And you're right, CJ. But the thing is, the cities, they're not going to do that. They don't have common sense. Common sense in the city goes off the wayside. Right. Off, offsetting offsetting the taxes to help the residents of Fall River. My God. Who who could think such a thing, right? Who, who, that, that, that's, that is something. That type of logic doesn't happen here. It just it doesn't happen here, especially with him. No. Remember when I called him a liar and a thief? He is a liar. Uh-huh. Oh, look, look, look what's coming into fruition now. He is a liar. Because he, said that, he said the trolley was that diamond. It's not. It's in, it's in the city garage. <laughs> it's, 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 it's unbelievable. So here, it's all coming into fruition. And, yeah. and the radio station, they couldn't believe that a, that a city resident will call, some, call a mayor a liar and a thief. It's because I got the facts to back it up. And now his own actions... Back it up even more. Watergate 2.0. Be damned of, of, the, of the citizens of Fall River. Yeah. They don't care. This, this system of government, I'm telling you, really, truly doesn't care. And their actions are showing it. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. Well, we're coming to the end of our show. I want to thank you, Nelson. As always, you're very informative and you bring us the information we need. I want to thank you all for watching. And remember, oh, be prepared for the uh, eclipse on Monday. Get your glasses now. There's there's still some available at Walmart and some other stores. And also, you might want to check with the library, see if they have any. I want to thank you for watching. And remember, stay safe, stay angry, and hold your politicians accountable. I'll see you on Monday.